come, said he, suddenly ceasing his familiar way of speaking, doubtless divining that his companion belonged to the rich and happy. Let us walk along the road to warm our feet, and I will tell you things which probably you have never heard of. I am called Jean Victor, that is all, for I am a foundling, and my only happy remembrance is of my earliest childhood at the asylum. The sheets were white on our little beds in the dormitory. We played in a garden under large trees, and a kind sister took care of us, quite young and as pale as a wax taper. She died afterwards of lung trouble. I was her favorite, and would rather walk by her than play with the other children, because she used to draw me to her side and lay her warm, thin hand on my forehead. But when I was twelve years old, after my first communion, there was nothing but poverty. The managers put me as apprentice with a chair mender in Faubourg Saint-Jacques. That is not a trade, you know. It is impossible to earn one's living at it. And as proof of it, the greater part of the time the master was only able to engage the poor little blind boys from the blind asylum. It was there that I began to suffer with hunger. and the bread, cut in tiny pieces for each meal, was kept under lock and key the rest of the time. You should have seen the mistress at supper time serving the soup, sighing at each ladleful she dished out. The other apprentices, two blind boys, were less unhappy. They were not given more than I, but they could not see the reproachful look the wicked woman used to give me as she handed me my plate. And then, Unfortunately, I was always so terribly hungry. Was it my fault, do you think? I served there for three years in a continual fit of hunger. Three years! And one can learn the work in one month. But the managers could not know everything, and had no suspicion that the children were abused. Ah! You were astonished just now when you saw me take the bread out of the mud? I am used to that, for I have picked up enough of it. And crusts from the dust, and when they were too hard and dry, I would soak them all night in my basin. I had windfalls sometimes, such as pieces of bread nibbled at the ends, which the children would take out of their baskets and throw on the sidewalks as they came from school. I used to try to prowl around there when I went on errands. At last my time was ended at this trade by which no man can support himself. Well, I did many other things, for I was willing enough to work. I served the masons, I have been shop boy, floor polisher, I don't know what all. But, pshaw, today work is lacking, another time I lose my place. Briefly, I never have had enough to eat. Heavens! How often have I been crazy with hunger as I have passed the bakeries? Fortunately for me, at these times I have always remembered the good sister at the asylum, who so often told me to be honest, and I seem to feel her warm little hand upon my forehead. At last, when I was eighteen, I enlisted. You know as well as I do that the trooper has only just enough. Now. I could almost laugh. Here is the siege and famine. You see, I did not lie when I told you just now that I have always, always been hungry. The young duke had a kind heart and was profoundly moved by this terrible story told him by a man like himself, by a soldier whose uniform made him his equal. It was even fortunate for the phlegm of this dandy that the night wind dried the tears which dimmed his eyes. Jean Victor, said he, ceasing in his turn by a delicate tact to speak familiarly to the foundling, if we survive this dreadful war we will meet again, and I hope that I may be useful to you. But in the meantime, as there is no bakery but the commissary, and as my ration of bread is twice too large for my delicate appetite, it is understood, is it not? We will share it, 
like good comrades.